All right, so now that I have the more circle drawn out, I'm ready to go ahead and determine the principal stresses, which are the most positive and least positive normal stresses on Mohr's circle. That means this point represents my most positive normal stress, and here this represents my least positive normal stress, and this would be called my major and my minor principal stresses, which have coordinates of sigma 1, comma 0, and sigma 2, comma 0, which indicate to me that in my principal stress state, my shear stresses are 0. So previously, we determined that this distance, this right here, was called sigma average, which was equal to 5. And now we have to go an additional distance all the way here to this most outer point, which is the radius, this distance r, and that tells me that sigma 1 is equal to sigma average plus the radius, which in this case is just 5 megapascals plus 33.54, and that is 38.54 megapascals. Similarly, for sigma 2, the minor principal stress, I would just go sigma average minus the radius. Sigma 2 is negative 28.54 megapascals. The angle of orientation associated with sigma 1 is this angle right here, which I will call alpha. Alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of 30 over 15, which is going to be 63 point four four degrees and in order for me to get to sigma one I have to rotate counterclockwise so I'm just gonna draw a little arrow indicating which way I gotta rotate from a to get to there and so on my stress element the angle that it would take to get me to sigma one my major principal stress is equal to alpha over two which is sixty three point four four divided by two and that's just thirty one point seven two degrees and also counterclockwise the theta p2 is associated with this angle, or half that angle right there. If I call this one beta, so beta would just be 180 minus alpha, which is 116.56 degrees. And in this case, you would be going clockwise from point A, or this reference A, where theta is equal to 0. And theta p2, the angle associated with principal stress 2, or the minor principal stress, sigma 2, is 116.56 divided by 2, which is 58.28 degrees clockwise. And now I'm ready to draw my principal stress state. My angles are all defined from theta equal to 0 degrees, which I defined as a horizontal. So the first thing I like to do when I draw my principal stress state in its correct orientation is start with the horizontal line, or the line that represents theta equals 0 degrees. And then I like to, since I'm going to draw sigma 1 first, I'm going to rotate to 31.72 degrees. So I'm going to draw a line that represents the face of sigma 1. And then I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this 31.72 degree line. Bam. And then I'm going to complete the square using this face. And now I would draw this 31.72 degrees is associated with sigma 1, which is positive 38.54, indicating that I have tension of 38.54 megapascals. This 58.28 degrees would represent this line right here. And on that face, I have sigma 2, which is negative 28.54. And that means that I would have a normal stress causing compression on this face, 28.54 megapascals. And notice, I didn't write a negative sign in front of here and draw the arrow in. If I draw, wrote a negative sign with the arrow going in, that would mean that I meant the arrow should be flipped in the other direction. I'm just writing the magnitude and the direction. The number indicates the magnitude, and the arrow indicates for me the direction. And this right here is my principal stress state. And let me just write these with the magnitudes written in. So now I want to examine the maximum in-plane shear stress state using Mohr's circle. And I've brought the values down with me that are important f when I want to determine the maximum in-plane shear stress. The maximum in-plane shear stress is just the furthest point at the top or bottom of Mohr's circle, or the largest tau associated with it. And so that would just be this point right here. These would be my maximum in-plane shear stress points. So if I want to determine the coordinate here, it's just the vertical distance straight down, which would be a distance r, that just tells me that this tau max is equal to the radius, or 33.54 MPA. And the coordinates at this point are sigma average, comma, tau max. 
the angle associated with this maximum in-plane shear stress state is this angle right here, which I will call phi. And phi is just equal to 90 degrees minus alpha, which is 26.56 degrees. And from zero degrees, this is going clockwise. And that would mean that theta s, or the angle in the plane stress element associated with my maximum in-plane shear stress state, is just equal to phi divided by 2, which would be 13.28 degrees, again going clockwise. And now I can draw my maximum in-plane shear stress state. And to do that, again, I start with my line representing theta equals 0 degrees, which in this case is, again, horizontal. I draw my line here to 13.28 degrees. My, I have a positive shear stress on this face. And if you will, this is like kind of rotating this x-axis plus x prime. My y-axis would just follow suit. So this would be the plus y prime. And on this face right here, I have a shear stress that's positive 33.54. So on the plus x face, it would be in the plus y direction, completing the shear stresses. This face has a normal stress of sigma average applied to it which means that the sigma average, if you recall, was 5 or positive 5 megapascals. So that means it's causing tension on the face. And even if I go to 90 degrees from here, which is 180 degrees and more circle, which is up over here, or this face, this would also be 5 megapascal uh, normal stress. And this is my plane stress element in the maximum in-plane shear stress state. All right, hopefully that was helpful. I'm going to do this problem again without more circle and show you just how easy it is to do the same problem using stress transformation equations. All right, take it easy. See ya.